I'm uh, so honored to be here today with such a um, distinguished group of people, virtually and in person. I wanted to talk about um, probably one of the, in my opinion, most important foundations of complete mesocolic excision, which is the vascular anatomy. And if you don't remember anything that I say today, um, I want you to remember that the vascular anatomy, particularly of the right and middle colon that we've been talking about, is so much more complex than I think any of us learned in medical school from textbooks. It's incredibly complex primarily because of the extreme variation that we might find when we do technically the same operation, but we have um, many variations of the blood vessels that we may encounter, and it's those variations that we need to be very keenly aware of to be able to do um, the operation safely, particularly when we're talking about a central um, vascular di um, dissection. I won't um, go into great detail because my colleagues have done such a wonderful job of reminding us that we are applying the principles of total mesorectal excision that we do routinely, as popularized by Dr. Um, Heald, um, to the mesocolon, where Dr. Hohenberger has really pioneered the idea of removing the mesenteric envelope of tissue without violating it, and how important this is to our surgical technique. And it has long been um, thought of or long been emphasized about the uh, a proper handling of the vascular structures um, for decades, really, since Dr. Trimble introduced his no-touch technique um, where we identify and ligate the um, blood vessels before manipulating the tumor so that we reduce the likelihood of the um, uh, cancer cell seeding or going into the, um, the circulation um, to improve um, uh, outcomes from surgery. And Dr. Hohenberger has really pioneered this when it comes to um, uh, complete mesocolic excision um, with thoughtful handling um, of the um, vascular structures, um, which we're talking about today. We have evidence in the literature that this improves oncologic outcomes, but the key is that it's, it's really hard to do sometimes, particularly when you're uncertain about the anatomy or what these structures are. And as Herman has really beautifully shown us, um, the, um, there's a lot of technical uh, fortitude that needs to be um, uh, present when we're doing these operations, particularly when the body habitus and other anatomic variants are present. So I wanted to talk about what are the variations that we need to be um, aware of when we um, when we do these operations or when we consider doing this, these operations. I want to draw from research that was obtained through radiographic studies, cadaveric studies, and um, in vivo intraoperative studies that have given us the best idea of what to encounter. Although Dr. Um, Quirk commonly says we have so much more to learn about the, um, the anatomy in this area. Um, I'm going to talk about the arterial side first and then the venous, even though I know, practically speaking, we do not see those two groups in isolation. We see them as um, in terms of the relationship with each other. I'll first ask how often are the arteries present, and I want to put forth um, a lot of the data supports that the ileocolic and the middle colic arteries are in general present always, so we can more count on those vessels to be present. However, the right colic artery is not always present. Um, in this study by um, Dr. Kuzu that we've mentioned before in this um, session, uh, and his colleagues from Turkey uh, with Dr. Hohenberger um, as part of their group, um, they saw that the presence of the right colic artery was present about 33%, other studies anywhere from 10 to 15%. And I want to highlight that um, I think traditionally we maybe have undervalued the presence of right colic artery because it's not present always. And I think with the uh, more emphasis on complete mesocolic excision, we're understanding that we do need to have a very good understanding of right colic artery and where it's located and how it, um, uh, its relationships with the other blood vessels in this area. We know that ileocolic in general almost always comes off of the SMA, but the right colic can be variable. It can come off of SMA, but it also can form a trunk with uh, ileocolic and middle colic or not be present at all. All these variations we need to be um, cognizant of and, and be prepared to encounter these during our dissection. This is a really important concept, this slide. It's the relationship of the ileocolic and the right colic artery with SMV. In general, ileocolic artery um, comes posterior to SMV, not always. Right colic artery, um, conversely, 
mostly will come anterior to SMV, not always. There's a concept called the crossing length, and that's the length between the origin, the ileocolic artery, and where it crosses the right-hand border of SMV, and that's a very debated last bit or high, you know, high tie. Do we need to get all the way to the takeoff um, or its origin on the SMA? And that's a very difficult um, area to expose with a very lateral traction of the um, mesocolon that can lead to bleeding and, and other complications. The middle colic artery is almost always present. Some studies show closer to 100%. This study um, showed closer to 78%. But the um, point that I want to make here is, and as it was mentioned before, commonly um, we might see duplicate or triplicate of the MCA that we need to be aware of. So think about MCA as being potentially multiple vessels that we need to identify. And now I want to just quickly go over the venous structures as um, Dr. Kessler and others have um, pointed out that are so important. And this is um, um, sometimes complex and new anatomy to a lot of people. First, the ileocolic vein, similar to the artery, it is generally constant. The ileocolic pedicle is a constant um, anatomic structure that we can rely on when we perform this operation. It also can drain, it drains into the SMV or it can um, drain into Henley's trunk. And this is a slide actually from Dr. Kessler to, to introduce the idea of Henley's trunk, which is a conglomeration or a confluence of tributaries of veins that drain the gastrocolic area, um, also the pancreatic duodenal area. And it was first described by Dr. Henley in the late 1800s, where he uh, identified it as being a branch of the right gastroepiploic uh, vein joining with one of the colic veins. And others have described it joining with other veins, including the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal vein uh, and multiple colic veins. And this is important because this is a bleeding point during complete mesocolic excision. This is a point that there's a lot of variation in anatomy and during the retraction and the manipulation of the bowel and the um, mesentery, this can be an area that easily bleeds and we can lose control of the situation with this. There is a tremendous variation within the trunk of Henley. The classic description in this study and others was not really seen commonly, um, but other um, studies have uh, uh, supported that um, a variation or a, um, a, a definition of a trunk of Henley that we would most commonly see would be the right gastroomental or the epiploic vein with any of the colic veins and the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal vein. That's mostly what we'll see. Again, it is a variant that we see more commonly than others, but certainly not a normal piece of anatomy that we can hang our hat on. We just have to be aware of all these variations. Um, this is Dr. Akuzu's nice cadaveric study that he did with Dr. Hohenberger showing these variants. Um, and then this is a nice study that was actually uh, presented two years ago at this meeting. I'm um, just showing that not only are the colic veins um, part of the um, trunk of Henley, but there can be variants of the number of colic veins we, we, we might see. And they showed that um, the, the most likely variant of the trunk of Henley that we might see would include one colic vein, but it could um, include two or three colic veins or none. And so we need to be aware of all of those variants and prepared to have a plan for how to ligate those. And lastly, the middle colic vein, similar to the artery, it is more constant and more likely to be in duplicate or triplicate. So to summarize, what I think about when I talk, think about the variants of anatomy is the ileocolic pedicle is generally a constant landmark, as is the middle colic artery and vein. But the middle colic artery and vein may vary in number and origin. Right colic, as I mentioned, is variable. Sometimes it's present and not as it's its origin. And the trunk of Henley may have lots of variations and is so important because it is such a high-risk bleeding area when we talk about um, complete mesocolic excision with that central vascular ligation. Thank you so much.